Here's a really interesting story that I was thinking a lot about recently. Spain decided they're going to do this giant pilot program testing out a four-day work week. The total number of hours in the work week, it's going to be 32. And this is the biggest program ever attempted with an idea like this. Because if I'm not mistaken, it's about 200 companies and 6,000 workers are going to, you know, partake in this program. Now, this seems incredibly foreign for somebody from the United States of America, because we have a culture here that's almost geared towards endless work. Um, it's kind of evolved like that over time. But listen, if you ask me, I think that other places have really struck a better balance between work time and leisure time. And this is, this is something that's fascinating. And I really wish them the best. So let me show you. This is from Business Insider uh, from 2019. But take a look at this. Microsoft recently implemented a four-day work week at a subsidiary in Japan, leading to a 40% productivity increase. A four-day work week can either mean that employees work a traditional 40-hour week over four days or that they work four typical eight-hour days totaling 32 hours per week. A 30-hour work week was popular in the early 20th century, but support dropped off following the Great Depression. Now some companies are experimenting with the idea again. So, um, I went back and I read an article on this, because I remember reporting on this all the way back in 2013. There's a great article in Alternet that went through the history of this in the United States. And um, you're going to be floored by some of these facts. So, apparently, in 1933, a 30-hour workweek law passed the Senate. Well, let me repeat that. In 1933, a 30-hour workweek law passed the Senate, which is even two hours less compared to what Spain is, is trying now. So, now it didn't pass the House, so it didn't become law, but we were this close in the United States to basically having a four-day work week, having a 30-hour work week. What happened was, as part of the New Deal, there was a compromise, and it became like a 40-hour work week, and it was paired with some other legislation as part of the New Deal. And so instead of going with the 30-hour idea, and by the way, the idea was to get more people working and shorter hours. Instead of that, we ended up going with 40 hours and pairing it with other New Deal programs. But again, it passed the Senate. We were this close to actually getting a... 30-hour work week. In fact, some companies have a, a rich history because they freely chose to do a 30-hour work week. Um, the Kellogg Company is one of them. And in the article I was reading in Alternate, they give a few examples of these different companies that embrace the 30-hour work week. They also give examples, I think there's a town in California and there was a town in Utah that embraced the 30-hour work week. And people loved it. And then they had a vote later on whether or not to continue it, and people overwhelmingly voted to continue it. And like I told you with this Business Insider headline, some recent studies on it, one of them found a 40% productivity increase. That's insane. So you're working fewer hours, but you're getting paid the same, and you're being even more productive. Where's the downside? Where's the downside? There's no downside. So we almost had that 30-hour work week here. One other fact I want to give you, just to show how, how much the Overton window has shifted in the U.S., and it bad direction. This is from that alternate article. Quote, at a time when workers produced a tenth of what they do today, William Howard Taft, a conservative Republican president, argued that all workers need two or three months of holiday time each year to improve health, family connections, and productivity. Conservative Republican presidents, William Howard Taft in particular, wanted up to three months paid vacation time by law for the American people. If Bernie Sanders were to propose that today, he would be called a crazy, socialist, communist, insane person, and he'd be laughed out of the room. But back then, conservative Republicans were like, um, listen, we're the pro-family people, and we think you need to spend more time with your family and recharge and be more productive when you actually do work. So yeah, I want up to three months paid vacation by law. Guys, just so you understand, the United States is the only developed country that doesn't have paid vacation time by law. Let me repeat that. We are the only developed country that doesn't have paid vacation time by law. Every other one you can name has some number of days off that's paid by law. You know, whether it's two weeks, some places have a month or two. 
So we're really getting screwed on that front. You have no idea just how much we're getting screwed on that front. That's a fight that needs to be taken on. But I love this uh, this program that they're trying in Spain. When you read the history of this in the U.S., it's absolutely fascinating. We've gone so much further right wing and so much more corporatist in the U.S. since even then, since the New Deal era. So it's crazy, man. Now, there is a deeper conversation to be had here. I don't know how much we want to get into this now, but listen, one of the biggest problems with our economy and with modern society is that people feel alienated and disconnected from their work, and so they're not happy. You know, uh, everybody wants to feel useful with what they do all day, and they want to feel creative with what they do all day. And the way our society functions and our economy functions now, um, people don't feel that. And so I was just reading this number the other day. Um, I think it was Gallup asked in 2013, what percentage of people feel, quote, engaged in their work? The number is depressingly low. Only 13% of Americans feel engaged in their work, which is a good way of saying only 13% like their job or happy at their job. Only 13% feel engaged. I mean, that's wild, man. That's, what, 87% do not feel engaged, so they're just sort of going through the motions. That's incredibly depressing. So how do we tackle this problem, which is arguably, like, the biggest problem? Because people don't have that meaning and purpose in their life. I mean, there's a few ways you could tackle it. The argument from socialists is you need to democratize the economy. Uh, you know, a form of market socialism would be take all these companies, democratize these companies. There's no longer that rigid hierarchy. Everybody gets an equal say in the direction of their company. And that alone will give people a greater say. They'll feel more empowered. They'll feel more meaning and purpose because now they get a, you know, a direct say in the direction of the company and therefore the direction of their own work and their lives. So that's what socialists argue is give people, empower people, get them more involved and then they'll feel more fulfilled. That's one way of looking at this. Another way of looking at this is a sort of a futuristic way where you say, what we need to do is automate all the grunt work that nobody wants to do and then still pay people for the fruits of the labor of the machines. You know, that, that's another way to look at it. It's like, get all the grunt work done where nobody has to do the grunt work, which we probably can do in short order because we have modern technology, which is kind of incredible. But the system is so rigged and so corrupt, I don't, I'm don't. i skeptical we could ever get to a point where we make such an altruistic and benevolent and objectively intelligent decision at the higher levels of society to say, yeah, pay people for a machine doing work on their behalf. So I don't know if we'll ever get to that point. But I do feel like there's this, this transitionary phase, this intermediate phase where what can be done is, tr I mean, try obviously as much as possible to make it so that people have fulfilling lines of work, really incentivize people to get into more fulfilling lines of work. But people aren't, there's just, I, I'm skeptical that we could ever get to a point where like 90% of people are, are doing work that they find fulfilling. So then the question becomes, okay, well, how can we then give people who aren't working fulfilling jobs the ability to feel fulfilled in other ways? And in step this idea of like the four day work week, you know, like, well, okay, what if you just had fewer days at work? And so your time off, you have the ability to pursue more of the things that make you feel useful and creative and happy. And, you know, you can get fulfilled that way, not necessarily through your economic life, but through your life outside of your economic life. And so that's why I'm such a strong supporter of something like a four day work week. Honestly, I think we should go even further. I like a three and a half day work week and you sort of split the week up into two shifts and some people work the first shift and some people work the second shift and, you know, you can, that way you're really giving people a lot more time to pursue their own interests and feel fulfilled um, because half the time they wouldn't be, you know, at, at work and worrying about money and economic life. And also, of course, I think you should provide people with material well-being enough where the floor is reasonable, unlike what we have now, which is why I think we should have a universal basic income as well. But... Yeah, like, going to a four-day work week is a step in the right direction. Because what that is, is I think that there's an acknowledgement of like, listen, there's still a lot of work that needs to get done that nobody wants to do. But we want these people to feel happy, and we want these people to feel fulfilled, and we want them to have a shot at life. And so, yeah, if you limit the number of days that you're forced to be at this terrible job, that's a good thing. That's a good thing. And of course, the idea is you pay them the same too, but... If they're being more productive, you should probably even pay them more. 
Um, and I think, obviously, minimum wage is not a living wage. We need to fix that problem as well. There's a lot more we could say about this. But, yeah, this is a fascinating conversation about meaning and purpose and how people feel fulfilled. And right now, only 13% of people feel engaged in their job. That's a crisis. And nobody really talks about that. Um, but this is definitely a step in the right direction. I would totally be in favor of going to a four day work week. I would like a three and a half day work week. And also I think we should democratize more aspects of the economy. We should give people a UBI. There's a number of things we could do, but at least in Spain, they're beginning to have this conversation about real solutions. Whereas here we're not. Apparently we did in the New Deal era, we were having these conversations, but now we're so far right on that spectrum in that Overton window that we laugh at this conversation, even though this is a real substantive conversation to have.